for those that those companies that already feel that they've got and those people listening that feel they've already got a good foundation but want to take their strategic workforce planning to, to the next level you know what what would your advice be around that yeah so i think you know this is where i could really chat about some customers because we've been on this journey with quite a few orgs that you know are looking have been looking to take their swp to the next level and so there's a few kind of things that spring to mind around that firstly one of the things is um, you know getting comfortable with the directional nature of swp you know one large uh, financial services customer had really gotten stuck with their swp in the way it was evolving in looking for the perfect data you know that really precise forecast and swp is not about predicting the future with 100 percent accuracy you know we i love to cite all models are wrong some are useful you know it's a famous statistician quote but we're looking for directional insights using a grounded conversation around a quantified model. And if SWP gets too focused on getting that perfect ornate forecast, it sacrifices speed, which is crucial for impact and relevance, right? Because again, as I said earlier, by the time you get it right, the business has moved on, things have changed and decisions have been made not using your data at all. So SWP is really about driving that shared view of the future and what to do about it. And that's arguably the most important conversation for a company. So I think for, for one customer, I kind of think about that, you know, just get going again, don't wait for perfection. Secondly, I think, you know, cross-functional groups are really important. We've got um, an Australian retailer who had a big shift coming through COVID to a lot of online, uh, you know, business model changes uh, as you'd expect, but, SWP, as I've said, integration between finance and the business strategy and HR. And so we need those cross-functional people. They bring key skills and strengths to the table. We want them to be engaged and we want them to be part of the process. But where this other customer had kind of um, fallen a bit short was they would brought everyone in and then no one was really accountable for the actions that came out of the plan. So, you know, we've got to remember the P of SWP is plan. So we have a plan, it needs to be implemented to be impactful. Um, so we need to make sure that we're seeing what the actions are and we're tracking those and we're holding people accountable and making sure things get done. And then thirdly, um, this is a large global organization, you know, I think 80 plus, countries, very large global footprint. Uh, for them, I think, again, they were kind of looking for that one size fits all of their SWP toolkit, uh, you know, across their entire org. But actually, what you really need is a flexibility of approaches to deal with the different business tempos and different business problems that you're trying to solve for. So we're able to really help them, you know, have that top down view to set the scene, you know, yes, you're trading off a bit of granularity in your forecast and a bit, bit more directional uh, actions, but driving that heavy strategy debate and consensus to set the scene across the org, we just chatted about pilots and, and they are very impactful. But if you have different pilots or different siloed parts of the business and they're using, for example, the same business driver, such as a revenue forecast or customer numbers, and they've got different views of that, then you're not getting that org alignment and people are rowing the boat in different directions, which is what had happened at this organisation. So we help them to create that top down to clear a lot of the noise in the leadership around some very fundamental stuff around their purpose, their mandate, you know, fundamental conversations. But then we're able to use that with divisions and functions and countries for, for more nuanced insights, uh, more detailed action planning. The top down also enabled them to surface priority workforce segments to then shape a roadmap for SWP rollout. You know, where did they need to go next? So they had that top down, bottom up kind of segmented tempo that were geared differently, but shared that coherence through a uniting SWP function. Um, and, and that SWP team really was able to, you know, provide business impact, but consistency. Yeah, three really good examples and quite different examples as well, which as you know, back to one of your earlier points, you know, what, what are you trying to achieve as a business? Um, and if once you understand that, then obviously, you know, take the steps to, to try and get there. Um, and actually, that probably leads it opens up to another a, a sort of wider question, you know, with with uh, with workforce planning with any kind of uh, program that, that, that's kind of come, come out of HR, but for workforce planning in particular, how do you measure success? 
That's a great question. I mean, for me, the first measure of success is that you've actually got a strategic workforce plan, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I've done a bit of thinking around this because it's something we get asked all the time, you know, how do we know it's successful or what can we tell our stakeholders to, to kind of create the business case around this stuff? And obviously, you know, in that fundamental question, what's our purpose and what's it going to take to get there is what SWP is about. So ensuring that the organisation actually knows what workforce it needs to execute against its strategic imperatives. You know, most organisations, it's scary. If you say, what workforce size, shape, skills do you need today? Most organisations cannot answer that. It's crazy. And if you say, what about three years? It's close to zero who have any view of that and their workforce you know yes it's the biggest cost but this is the enabling asset and we're all hyped up about skills but we don't even know what we need and how that aligns to enabling our business so that's a big measure of success or what we've got right but but then we can't just focus on what we've got and and then have no view of what we need yeah Exactly, exactly. So that's a big measure of success. Having a strategic workforce plan with a forecast view of from today onwards, what we need in terms of size, shape and skills. Uh, you know, obviously what comes out of that is an action plan. Uh, that's a very important point. You know, that creates that coherence across the HR function. It gives the roadmap for what HR needs to be focusing on to really move the needle for the business. You know, we could be doing a thousand things. We can be the order takers. How do we distill for impact for the business? That action plan that comes out of SWP. Usually, you know, for us um, at Equate, we're really focused on grounding that commercially using net present values, cost benefits, and really understanding how it mitigates risk to the business being able to execute. Uh, but fundamentally, you know, and this is maybe a bit more ethereal, um, but I think where we see a real shift in the impact of strategic workforce planning is where organisations fundamentally shift their view of the workforce from just being a cost to being a value generating asset. And depending on where the workforce sits in the value chain, what it's, you know, where it hits transformation initiatives or, or change and digitisation, whatever the roles are doing, the skills or whatever, this is an asset and if you don't have it in place, this is not just about cost optimization, this hits your top line. You are not going to be able to meet your revenue objectives. You are not going to meet your transformation milestones. You are not going to meet your project delivery. All of that stuff, you know, this is an asset that generates value for you. And that's a fundamental shift from the way organizations think. And, and trust me, coming from a finance background, it's, it's a real step change, but I think the ones that nail it, you know, we've seen the World Economic Forum come out with, you know, pushing accounting standards to be revised to treat the workforce differently. And I think that organisations that really step up and do this, it's going to be a game changer. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.